Well, Milo Lefevre has lived at the top of success and the bottom of despair. He had all that the world told him he needed as a professional musician. Then he discovered the power of the gospel and found what he was truly missing. Now, after decades of ministry, Milan and Christy are here to share what they've learned to help us discover how we can enjoy our walk of faith. You were raised in a Christian home. Yes, ma'am. And your mother, the famous Eva May Lefevre, who we love and so many love. Some of you enjoy the music of the Lefevres. But there are a lot of people who are Christians, but they're not really walking in victory. That's right. And that's a real pet peeve with you. It is. God loves them. And I'm glad. God loves them. So, you know, religion is a relationship with an organization or a denomination, but Christianity is a relationship with God. Yeah. And when you come to God, we all have reasons for why we are the way we are and the problems yeah. we had and what happened in our childhood. And mm -hmm. We all have reasons to be angry or frustrated or to not trust people. But when you come to God, Mm -hmm. Those reasons, when you come in contact with Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. those reasons become excuses. That's mm -hmm. good. Because yes. the power of God can, mm -hmm. it, it not only can fix everything, yes. when we become Christians, we become new creatures. We're not even the same people that went through that other stuff. Yeah. And uh, there's just a whole new life available to us, as you know. Third John 2, he said, I, Beloved, above all things, that's everything in yes. your life. Mm -hmm. It is the will of God that you prosper and be in health as your soul prospers. Mm -hmm. And I think the key to enjoying being a Christian is for your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. Mm -hmm. When to get your mind renewed to mm -hmm. thinking like the Lord and seeing the situation in your life from His perspective and getting your emotions under the control of the Holy Spirit. In mm -hmm. other words, we're led by the Holy Spirit or we're, or we're driven by our flesh. Mm -hmm. Where he's led me in the last 30 years is just to a, a better place. Every day, mm -hmm. my life is exponentially more blessed mm -hmm. as I just simply trust and obey. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Yeah. yeah, I like that. And this young lady sitting beside you, has she been a part of that journey with you? Oh, my goodness. Other than the Lord Jesus, she's the best thing that ever happened to me. <laughs> I love that. Now, how long have y'all been married now? Going on 14 years. Wow. 14 years. Yay. It just seems like... Just yesterday, I mean, you haven't changed at all, has she? No, what no. are you taking good care of her, Mylan? <laughs> well, she's taking good care of me. <laughs> <laughs> so, what was the difference for you? I mean, early on, again, you raised in a Christian home, but you kind of strayed off course for a while and then ended up coming back, you know, to serving the Lord. What was the, what was the difference for you? Did you have that kind of disconnect with religion, if you will? When I was a kid, I believed in God. I believed there was a God, yeah. but I didn't believe God. And that's the difference in faith. Mm. There are a lot of people who go to church who are unbelievers. Yeah. They have hope. They hope that this is going to work. Yeah. Nobody wants to go to hell. Everybody wants fire insurance. Yeah. And if there's a God and Jesus is his son, then everybody wants Jesus as their savior. What changed my life was when I humbled myself and received Jesus as my Lord and master. Yeah. And he started telling me what to do instead of me doing what I wanted to and begging him to make it work out the way I wanted it to. Because mm -hmm. that's religion, again. So, so what was the difference? Your thought patterns were different? I mean, as I started as... studying the Word. You know, faith comes by hearing yes. and hearing by the Word of yeah. God. And once you trust God, yeah. I mean, we're talking about enjoying being a Christian. Now, that's yeah. what this whole yeah. thing is about. Right. My favorite scripture is... Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. good. Yes. And blessed is the man who trusts in him. If a Christian is going to enjoy his life, who's going to enjoy their life more? The person who's blessed or the person who isn't blessed? Yeah, and good. the bottom line is in order to be blessed, you have to believe that God's intention, every, this is good news. Mm -hmm. If the Bible's got any bad news in it, we're in trouble. Mm -hmm. No, this is all good news because God is a good God. He never, God good, devil bad. Yeah. <laughs> until that's, until that's settled, God yeah. gets the blame for bad stuff, but he doesn't do any bad stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So if people trust God and start doing things his way, that's what I didn't do. I, I, I had hope that it was all going to work out. I knew that God was good. Right. And I asked him all the time to help me and bless me. But I didn't obey him. Right. I didn't submit my, I was the Lord of my own life. Yeah. 
So you had yourself sitting up on the throne of your heart. You exactly. didn't have God sitting there. I was too selfish, and yeah. I didn't trust anybody, and, and I didn't trust God. There's a counselor that we've had on. You know, you've introduced mm -hmm. me to Jerry, and he says you either have, you know, you can have God sitting on the throne of, heart, of your heart, or it'll be something that God yeah. created mm -hmm. sitting Amen. on the throne of your heart. And exactly. that could be yourself sure. or something else. Or mm -hmm. another person. But it's so important. So what about that, Christy, as far as, the Christian walk is concerned. I guess you met Mylon mm -hmm. after he had really made Jesus Lord. How has that affected you guys' marriage and your ministry? Well, I think for us, one of my very favorite scriptures that is perfect for how to enjoy being a Christian and how we enjoy every day with Jesus is Galatians 3, 9, which says those who are the people of faith those who choose to trust and believe God, mm -hmm. they are blessed. And then in the Amplified, it says they are made happy. Mm -hmm. You know, people of faith mm -hmm. are happy people. Mm -hmm. That's right. And then it finishes up by saying those people of faith are favored by God. Mm -hmm. So we know from that scripture that a life of faith produces blessing, it produces happiness, and it produces favor. Well, you know, that sounds like an enjoyable life to me. Yeah. And, you know, and that's what we have endeavored yes. every day is to trust God. Yeah. yeah. So Anna, yes, pop in here because well, I know you what have What I would a like to say about that is I meet Christians, as I'm sure you do, who don't have the victory. And I said to someone recently, I said, why bother being a Christian if you can't be victorious? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, that's the whole difference in the world and with us is that we can go through things. God is with us and he will bring us yeah. to that place and of victory. And we will go through things. We will go through yeah. things. There's yeah. no cool. doubt about it. Yeah. But we can come through it with victory. And I see people who are just religious don't have the victory. They have rules without right. victory. Exactly. James calls it test. He said, does anybody have any trials and tribulations? We all have them, temptations. Yes. He said, it's only the testing of your faith. Of your faith. So mm -hmm. the good news is we can pass the good. test yes. because he that's in us is greater than he that's in the world. And if we truly believe that, yes. then we will pass the test. And, and for some people, the test lasts 10 years. But for those who trust God, the test can be over in, you know, yes. very short time. And what happens yes. with it? Then it makes you perfect, complete, laugh, lacking in nothing. Yes. So who wouldn't want that? Look at that man down Come there. Come on now. <laughs> Come on, complete, girl. Lacking in nothing. Preach that yes. word. <laughs> well, you know, Marcus's favorite scripture is John 15 and 7. Mm -hmm. He abide in me, and my yes. words abide in you. Mm -hmm. She'll ask whatsoever you will, and it mm -hmm. shall be done in my Father which is in heaven. Mm -hmm. But it's important part to understand, not that it shall be done in my Father, but it's the front part you gotta yeah, get. If you is. abide in me, yes. and my words, words abide yes. in you. Yes. So I think that was a That's real good. turning mm -hmm. point for you to get the Word of God on the inside Without of you. Without a doubt. Mm -hmm. You cannot have a relationship with God and not let Him talk to you. Mm -hmm. That's true. I can't have a relationship with you if I do all the talking. Mm -hmm. We won't have a very good relationship. Right. Some people think prayer is them doing all the talking, but it's they don't ever read the Bible so that God can talk to them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And don't you think too that in the relationship, if you have a love relationship with Jesus. Yes. Not mm -hmm. just a relationship in that, yes. it's a selfish relationship. Every time you go to him, it's because you want something. Mm -hmm. But when you really fall in love with Jesus, I mean, when you really have a picture of his grace and his mercy, mm -hmm. and that our father wants the best for his children, then you fall in love with him and that makes you happy. You know, exactly. so many people aren't in love with yeah. the Lord like mm -hmm. they should yeah. be. That, that is the key word there is what you're saying is that you know, God wants to have a personal relationship yes. with you. Mm -hmm. You can talk to Him just like we're talking around the table. You can enjoy fellowship with Him every day, and He longs for that. That's why we were created. That's why He created Adam, was to have fellowship. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I, I humbly submit that anybody that's not in love with Jesus doesn't know Him very well. Yeah. Yeah. You, he, God is love. Yeah. Right. You cannot get to know Him without falling in love. It's impossible. Mm -hmm. It's right. I'll tell you one thing we talk about around here at Daystar quite a bit is attitude. Mm -hmm. And give me someone with less ability and a good attitude, I'll take them any day yes. over someone with a lot of ability and a rotten attitude. Amen. Mm -hmm. So um, God does look at our heart. And I know the, the parable of the sower is something that really can minister to those that are listening today, but kind of explain the different types of heart attitudes that God's kind of shown you through this teaching. Well, in Mark, the fourth chapter, if you if you're keeping up in your Bible, Jesus was teaching and, and he said, the sower sows the word. And today, 
we're sowing the word, mm -hmm. but we're not sowing our thoughts or our words. We're sowing the word of God. And that's, mm -hmm. and Jesus said there's four kinds of people on the earth. When they hear the word of God, they fall into one of four categories. Mm -hmm. Everybody falls into one of four categories. The first one, they heard the word, but immediately Satan stole it from their hearts. In other words, they didn't believe it. Mm -hmm. They looked at others who were Christians and they decided, ah, that's not for me. They and they went their, their own heart. way. Mm -hmm. Yes, they hardened their, they hardened heart. their heart. The second group of people were like stony ground. They heard the word, but uh, and at once they received it and accepted it and welcomed it with joy. But when a little trial, mm -hmm. temptation, Tough troubles, times, yeah. persecution, and the, and the worst thing is they were offended at the word. When yeah. a minister or someone anointed came into their life that God sent to help them to understand, yeah. they didn't like being corrected. Mm -hmm. They wanted to continue doing what they wanted to do and begging God to bless it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they got offended and they stumbled yeah. and they fell away. So the word was available to them. It had the power to help them, and, and but it didn't help them. This happens a lot with baby Christians. Exactly. Yes. And so yes. that's why it's so important to get Did grounded. You, is that what you experienced along the way well, back that, yes, in your past? Yes, exactly. That's exactly what I did as a child. I was just rebellious and I didn't want anybody. I didn't like my dad telling me what to do or my teachers or my sergeant or my coach. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so, and I didn't trust God enough to let him tell me what and to do. And once offense so. comes, oh my goodness. it literally oh, shuts the windows of heaven. Unforgiveness oh, and offense, doesn't yes. it? Well, and one of my favorite scriptures, although I can't tell you where it is, says, Great peace have those who love God's word, and nothing shall offend them. Yes. Yes. And Come we on. need to hold on to that. Yes. Nothing shall offend us. Yes. But what happens is what you're talking about is that people then say, I tried that Christianity mm -hmm. thing, and it just yeah. didn't work right. for There's me. There's all those hypocrites yes. in the church. There's all these hypocrites. <laughs> There's all those hypocrites. How many work. times have you heard that? <laughs> all them hypocrites. Yes. And yep, How there are... How many times have I said that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, especially yeah. because, it, I mean, it is true because you're, you, there's no such thing as a perfect no. church. You're always going to have hypocrites to deal with, you know? I like the way it says it in the Amplified. Listen to this. It says, uh, when persecution arises on account of the word, they immediately are offended. They become displeased, indignant, resentful, and they stumble and fall away. Mm -hmm. And the Word of God, so the one that had all the power that raised Jesus from the dead, couldn't help them at all. Yeah. Wow. And you can get hung up there, though. Oh, yeah. I mean, there are people watching right now. Spend and they're, their whole they're, lives there. They're mm -hmm. hung up in that oh, offended. Yes. I already tried that, bought Didn't the T-shirt. I want anything to do with God, the church. And, and you're mm -hmm. missing out mm -hmm. on what God has for you because you know what? He hasn't done anything but love you. That's right. Mm -hmm. and, exactly. and reach out His loving arms to and embrace you. They just have to ask for forgiveness, right? Yes. Yeah. I mean, in order to not have an offended heart, you have to be willing to forgive, mm -hmm. even when you don't want to, even when oh, it yeah. hurts. It's a choice, not That's a feeling. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Say choice. that again, please. It's a choice, not a feeling. So many people will not forgive because they don't feel like it. Or mm -hmm. That person doesn't deserve it. But that's not the, the way we forgive. We forgive by choice, yes. by decision, and, because right. God tells us to. Right. And we do it by faith, like by faith. everything else that's in right. God. We trust Him. Mm -hmm. when, when we don't know how to do something and we submit what we can control yes. and we humble ourselves and submit to Him, He puts His super on our natural. Mm -hmm. yeah. He gives that's us right. the holy the grace, the ability to do that, that he told us to do, mm -hmm. that in the natural, in the flesh, yes. we didn't know how to do. And I think God loves it when we say, I just can't do that by myself. And he yeah. says, it's about time you realize that. Yeah. Now let me exactly. do it with you. Yeah. Let me show you how to and, do it. And I bet yeah. that today, looking back at those early days when you got offended and you saw hypocrites and you saw people in ministry that weren't living right, et cetera, et cetera, that today you have a whole new perspective on how you view those individuals, don't you? Oh, without a doubt. And, and, uh, and they and don't dictate your walk with the Lord. Not at all. Yeah. Nobody does. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm not getting cheated. I'm not going to re receive Which less than God's word. best yeah. because, because of... somebody else is human. Exactly. Or somebody else does or doesn't understand. Yeah. I mean, I'm, if you're a people pleaser, you're in trouble. Yes. But if you're trying to please God, it's easy. All you have to do is trust and obey. Mm -hmm. yes. It's not hard. No, yeah, it isn't. The third heart. Yeah. The third heart are the ones sown among the thorns, and they're the ones that the cares and anxieties of the age, it says, and the distractions of the age, the pleasure and delight and false glamour and deceitfulness of riches, mm -hmm. the pride of life. The, in other words, they go down the mall wanting their life to be better, and they throw that plastic down and they really think it's going to get better. Mm -hmm. Well, that's just the deception of riches. Yeah. Things don't help. 
the peace that comes from God. It says those things, the desire for things, the anxieties, that's a nice word for fear, yes. the distractions, there's, there's all this stuff going on in the world saying if you win at all this, you'll be happier. Mm -hmm. But it's not true. It yeah. says those things choke and suffocate the Word. Now these are good people. Mm -hmm. These are the people who did believe the Word and the devil didn't steal that from them. They did get through persecution. They got through offense. They refused. These people go to Bible study. Mm -hmm. This third group of people, mm -hmm. they go to church. Mm -hmm. Some of them are tithers. Some of them pray in the Spirit. Yeah. So these are good, godly people. These are not mean old sinners. Mm -hmm. These are good people, the salt of the earth. And yet they let the cares of life. Well, right. I care about Grandma. I got to make more money to help take care of her and my kids in school and the and they work yeah, so hard. Yeah, this job is so important. Yeah. They, they make legitimate things. They let legitimate things that are important mm -hmm. come before their relationship with God. Mm -hmm. So they're and putting those things on the throne of their heart. The Bible says that God. if you let those things come first, mm -hmm. instead of seeking first His kingdom and so His righteousness, uh, that instead of trusting that all these things will be added unto you, those things choke out and suffocate mm -hmm. the Word. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's subtle. It's mm -hmm. slow. Because those it's, things become an idol. Exactly. Yes, yeah. They exalt themselves above the knowledge of God. They become yeah. imaginations. They, they, you think they'll help, but That's they true. won't. Yeah. And if there's, any, I, I've seen the deceitfulness of riches. Mm -hmm. You know, yes. I've, I've lived in the Beatles' houses, and, and mm -hmm. uh, if you knew some of the people that I knew, I've lived in some palaces, mm -hmm. and I've lived in trailers. You know. Trust in God is not like hitting the lotto. It's line upon line, precept mm -hmm. upon precept, Walking from faith to faith, yes. from glory to glory. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, and, it, and it, he said, don't let anything choke out the word or it becomes fruitless. Yes. Yeah. It doesn't bear fruit. And mm -hmm. of course, the fourth group of people are the ones who heard the word, their hearts were well adapted soil, which means whatever God said, they looked at their lives and said, wow, I hadn't been doing it that Hopefully way. Hopefully that's us. I've had a wrong attitude. Yes, yes. 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 Yeah. My goal in life is yeah. to change for Jesus. Amen. And, and keep that soil oh my goodness, pliable yeah. where God can continue to plow through. Because yes. it's, it's a never ending journey, exactly. this walk of faith. And we're, yes. under, we're yeah. seeing in this, in this story, in this parable, but how important, like you talked about, keeping the soil where it can, mm -hmm. the Word of God can go, but how important the Word of God is. Oh. Yes. It, you can't be a Christian without it. You wouldn't know about Jesus without it. You know, that third group you were talking about, about the cares of life and all of the stresses that happen, I think we get caught up there in seeking to do the urgent rather than the important. Mm -hmm. How many things do we do because it's urgent? We've got to do this. Yeah, and true. we forget the important. And if you look at Jesus, mm -hmm. Lazarus was dying. That should have been urgent, but he was doing the important. He was doing what his father yeah. wanted him to do. So yeah. if we look to the important rather than the urgent, I think we can stay out of it's some like of that It's like Mary strife. was mm -hmm. at the feet of Jesus yeah. and Martha was fussing because yeah. she wasn't <laughs> in the kitchen helping her. Yeah. So it doesn't always make sense, you know. At the end of that, it said, those people with well-adapted hearts, they bear fruit. Mm -hmm. And that's the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. I asked God, what is that fruit? Um, if I'm going to teach this, i got to know the truth. Yes. He said, the fruit of the Holy Spirit in Galatians 5 is my personality. If you want to be like Jesus, mm -hmm. then you'll be peaceful and you'll be gentle and yes. you'll be kind. You'll be like Christian. And you'll be patient. Right? Yes. Come on, somebody. <laughs> That's good That's preaching. That's the way Christy is. I mean, you're right. And, that, and I think the fruits Sweet. of the Spirit are so much more important than even oh, the yeah. gifts of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Of course, the gifts of the Spirit are important, but if you don't have the fruits... Exactly. Yeah, you, you know what? Off. If we don't get there, yeah. nobody's going to want what we got. Yeah. Yeah. If we've been born again for 30 years and we got the same bad temper we had 30 years ago yeah. and we're just as easily offended, yeah. then... Why would anybody follow us? We're in a church, they would go to and church we're in a church us. speaking in tongues, you know, exactly. and then going home oh and goodness. being mean to the family. Exactly. It doesn't make sense. And blaming other yeah. people for our problems yeah. and yeah. self-pity yeah. and all that stuff. That's not going to attract anyone. That's mm -hmm. right. In the Bible, we're told that the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. This should be what a Christian's life looks like. And you're very passionate about the fruits of the Spirit as well. Yes, ma'am. I just believe that uh, if you really are enjoying the Lord, you, you know, the fruit of the Holy Spirit is in Galatians 5, and he talks about it's the personality of God. Mm -hmm. it's, it the, it's the character of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. yes. Now, what is the goal of Christianity? Is it we, do we just get a fish on our bumper and go to church and, and be good once a week, or are we going to actually be like Jesus? 
Do we want to learn to think like him yeah. and perceive life the way he says mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and, and, and grow up to the point where we grow up in love to where we talk like him and we yes. act like him and we react when right. somebody does something mean to us. We're still kind. Yes. We're so quick to forgive and slow to anger mm -hmm. that we continue to be patient and peaceful mm -hmm. and gentle and good and faithful and, yeah. and have our self-control. You know, the reward for that, praise God, is in John, the 15th chapter and the 16th verse. Jesus said, I have a chosen and appointed you to bear fruit and to keep on bearing it so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, wow. he may give it to you. Yes. That's the that. will of God. <laughs> God wants to bless you. Right. He wants to fill your home and your life and your heart with peace, your relationships, your family. He yes. wants to heal your body. He wants to fill you with the joy of the Lord and strengthen you and make you strong in the Lord and the power of his might. And he wants you to have more fun than anybody else on this planet. God mm. bless you. We're praying for you. Amen. <laughs> That is a good word, and we're out of time. I want to thank my dear friends, Mylon and Christy LeFevre. Yes. Mylon Dick's a killer steak, let me just say. He hasn't invited us over for a while. But I want to thank him for joining us today. If you struggle with enjoying your Christian walk and you'd like prayer, in all seriousness, we have prayer partners that are standing by ready to pray with you right now. And we do want to see you walk in all that God has for you. Ladies, thank you so much. Mylon, did you have fun? I had so much fun. I enjoy Great. being a Christian. All right. Thank yes. you, Mylon and Christian. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye for today.